Whether you work on a construction site, in a manufacturing or warehouse location, or in an office, musculoskeletal disorders, or MSDs, make up a large number of workplace injury claims. The physical, emotional, and financial cost associated with MSDs is much greater than the cost would be to prevent such injuries. Musculoskeletal disorders usually refer to an injury or damage of skeletal muscle, tendons, bones, ligaments, joints, nerves, blood vessels, or related soft tissue, including strain, sprain, and inflammation. The most common cause of MSDs is by strenuous physical overload or by repetitive use of a joint or a particular muscle group, commonly referred to as repetitive stress disorders. The purpose of this video is to provide you with information about the various types of MSDs from which you might suffer and to help explain ergonomics and how ergonomics may help minimize your risks and injuries. The benefits of an ergonomics safety program include a decrease in risk of injury, increased efficiency and productivity, improved morale, and fewer lost work days. The contents of this video include Definition of ergonomics Symptoms of musculoskeletal disorders Health effects Identifying problems Ways to control or reduce hazards Risk factors and controls And training The word ergonomics comes from the Greek word ergon, meaning work, and nomics, meaning natural. However, the word ergonomics does not imply natural work principles. Ergonomics is the process of designing work areas to be user-friendly, using tools and equipment to reduce strain and or repetitive motions, and teaching employees proper work methods, correct posture, and safe lifting techniques. Different jobs and tasks can produce a wide range of MSD symptoms, from sore muscles to numb fingers. Symptoms may appear suddenly from a single incident, such as twisting while trying to lift a box or gradually over a period of time. Failing to recognize early warning signs could allow small problems to develop into serious injuries. Although symptoms may not necessarily lead to a musculoskeletal injury, if experienced, employees should report them to their supervisor immediately. An evaluation of the work area and employee working positions can then be assessed and necessary changes made. Be proactive when it comes to your safety and the safety of those around you. Some possible symptoms include pain or aches in the hands, wrist, arms, neck, shoulders, back, legs, or feet. Numbness, cramping, fatigue, strain, burning sensation, weakness, swelling, stiffness, redness, or tingling in the affected area. Reduced grip strength in one or both hands. Reduced range of motion. Tension and or stress headaches. Dry, itchy or sore eyes, double or blurred vision. MSDs can affect the ability to perform normal work duties, physical tasks around the home, and many recreational activities. Symptoms can progress into conditions which require time off of work, prolonged physical therapy, and in many cases, surgery. Some health conditions you should be aware of include muscle strains to the neck, back, shoulders, and legs, carpal tunnel syndrome, which is caused by pressure placed on the median nerve in the wrist in the area where the nerve enters the hand. The area is known as the carpal tunnel, hence the name carpal tunnel syndrome. This nerve provides feeling and movement to many parts of the hand, 
and any pressure on the nerve results in pain, numbness, tingling, and other discomforts. Tendonitis is inflammation, irritation, and swelling of a tendon, which is the fibrous structure that joins muscle to bone. Bursitis is inflammation of the fluid-filled sac, known as bursa, that lies between a tendon and skin, or between a tendon and bone. Bursitis is commonly caused by chronic overuse, trauma, or infection, and causes joint pain and tenderness, stiffness and achiness, swelling or redness over the joint. To determine if conditions in the workplace which contribute to employees developing MSDs might be present, certain steps should be utilized and noted. A complete review and analysis of injury and illness records should be made to determine whether there is a pattern of ergonomic related injuries in certain jobs or work tasks. The review may include looking over OSHA 300 logs and supporting 301 forms, employee workers' compensation claims, employee reports of problems with work conditions, employee absenteeism records, especially different departments, to indicate if there is a recognizable pattern. As part of the review, a hazard assessment should be conducted for all work areas, job tasks performed, and equipment and tools used to identify potential ergonomic problems. Management should determine if job tasks present ergonomic risks that may contribute to MSDs. Employee input about possible ergonomic issues related to certain jobs should be obtained. Management should talk with employees, conduct symptom surveys, and use employee questionnaires. Other possible indicators of conditions which might lead to MSDs include a decline in job performance, quality control problems, employees shaking arms and hands, or rolling shoulders due to discomfort, employees voluntarily modifying workstations and equipment to increase comfort, and employees bringing in and using ergonomic products to the worksite, such as a wrist brace. Knowing the symptoms, risk factors, and being able to identify the problems is only part of the solution. Creating a safer and more ergonomically correct work area is the final piece of the puzzle. The three-level hierarchy of controls is generally accepted as the best strategy for controlling workplace hazards, including ergonomic hazards. Engineering controls are generally considered the first and best approach to preventing and controlling workplace hazards, including MSDs. Engineering controls involve designing the job, including the workstation layout, selection and use of tools and work methods to take account of the capabilities and limitations of the workforce. Administrative controls are workplace practices and policies designed to reduce or prevent exposures to ergonomic risk factors. It is important to note administrative controls do not eliminate job hazards like engineering controls do. Administrative controls involve things such as schedule changes to provide more rest breaks and or job rotation, more employee training to recognize risk factors, and teaching correct work techniques to reduce strain and stress when performing each job tasks. These controls can be a direct result of the workplace evaluation. Personal protective equipment is considered the last line of defense. Items such as vibration attenuation gloves, knee pads, and various braces provide certain protection for employees from ergonomic risk factors. Provided the use of such items does not create additional hazards, they are acceptable for your company to utilize. Always follow your company's rules and regulations concerning the use of personal protective equipment and other items. Different MSDs can occur depending on the type of work and workplace. 
Whether certain work activities put an employee at risk of injury often depends on how long, the duration, how often, the frequency, and how intense, the magnitude, the employee's exposure to the risk factors in the activity. Jobs or working conditions presenting multiple risk factors will have a higher probability of causing a musculoskeletal problem. It is important to review the job site and activities of affected employees to identify ergonomic related risk factors. Most risk factors are categorized as force, repetition, awkward and static postures, and contact. Additionally, vibration and environmental risk factors are possible and often combine with other risks to increase the potential for MSDs to develop. While many risks and controls are discussed in this video, the list is not all-inclusive. You should discuss all potential risks, hazards, and controls with your supervisor. Force is defined as the amount of physical effort required to perform a task or to maintain control of equipment or tools. Force risk factors include lifting, carrying or lowering an object, pushing or pulling objects, and gripping objects. Additional grip force is needed when the object is small, oddly shaped, slippery, or vibrates. Controls of force risk factors involve using mechanical equipment made for lifting, carrying, lowering, pushing, pulling, or gripping objects whenever possible, reducing load size when possible, or getting assistance if the load is too large, arranging workspaces to keep materials in front of you between shoulder and waist height, maintaining work height at or about elbow height, keeping supply and disposal areas positioned to eliminate the need to twist when reaching, using proper lifting techniques when lifting an object or load, plan ahead, bend at knees and keep back straight, keep feet shoulder length apart, tighten the abdominal muscles, lift the object close to the body, lift with the legs, and using electric tools when practical, Always keep tools clean, maintained, and in good operational condition. Do not use a damaged tool. Repetition is defined as performing the same motion or series of motions continually or frequently for an extended period of time, using the same muscles and body parts. Repetition risk factors include job task with little variety in body movements or motion. This leads to overuse of certain muscles and or parts of the body. Also, new employees performing job tasks for which they are not accustomed to doing can lead to pain or discomfort. Controls of repetition force factors involve job rotation. It is important to cross-train employees allowing several employees to rotate through different jobs with different physical demands, thereby reducing stress. Allowing an employee to take frequent breaks allows recovery and rest for muscles and other areas of the body. Job enlargement. Broadening or varying the job activities to include a wider variety of tasks to help reduce the frequency and duration of repetitive motions. And adjusting the work pace. Awkward and static postures are a major contributing factor to MSDs. Assuming unnatural, unhealthy, or uncomfortable positions place an undue stress on the body. Static postures indicate a posture being held for an extended period of time. Awkward or static postures have several risk factors, which include repeated or prolonged reaching above shoulder height, extended reaches across wide work areas, kneeling, squatting, and leaning over another object, bending or twisting the torso while lifting, bending to work at a lower level, looking down to work, holding or using tools in a non-neutral or fixed position, 
maintaining fixed positions such as sitting or standing for extended periods of time, and typing or performing other work with a bent wrist. Controlling the factors for awkward or static postures starts with an analysis of the workplace and can include the use of proper lifting techniques, changing a workstation layout, using height adjustable tables, chairs, desks, etc., using seats with backrest, lumbar support, and armrest, limiting vertical and horizontal reaches to areas where the elbows remain close to the body, keeping your body within 20 degrees from vertical when bending forward, and if standing for a long period of time, occasionally shift your weight from foot to foot. Contact stress results when part of your body rubs or makes contact with a hard or sharp component of your desk, workstation, work area, or tool. The contact may be occasional, repeated, or continuous. Contact stress is generally worse when contact is made repeatedly or for long periods at a time. The risk of contact stress occurs when the edges of desk or work tables press into arms, legs, and other body parts. Additionally, contact stress can occur with the striking of objects on a continuous basis. Sometimes foot switches are used to control machines, resulting in contact stress. Controlling contact stress risk factors can be achieved by the use of a different tool, such as electric or powered tools and equipment. Cushioning material can sometimes be placed on the edges of desks or workstations, eliminating the sharp edges. If practical, the wearing of cushioned shoes, gloves, and knee pads can reduce or eliminate contact stress. Various elements in the environment can affect employees' ability to perform their work tasks. Among these risk factors are cold temperatures, hot temperatures, noise levels, and lighting. Controlling environmental factors can be challenging. Maintain a constant, comfortable temperature whenever practical. High noise levels may require personal protective equipment when indicated, such as earplugs or earmuffs. Replace light bulbs or tubes as necessary. And use anti-glare screens on monitors to help visibility. Training for awareness is an important factor in preventing MSDs. Employees need to understand the causes of MSDs, symptoms, and ways to control the risks involved. An ergonomics safety program should be implemented if none exists and reviewed on a regular basis. Effective employee training needs to contain at least the following. How to recognize the risks and symptoms of MSDs. Company procedures for reporting risks and symptoms proper use of all equipment and tools, how to properly adjust equipment according to manufacturer's guidelines to best fit the individual employee and their job tasks. The prevention of MSDs is an ongoing battle. Many times factors that have been effective in the past no longer work more complex equipment requires the use of adequate training and observation of worker performance to recognize risk factors for MSDs. Many times, newer designed workstations have ergonomic principles built into them. If a worker develops an MSD, it is important to get to the root cause and prevent future employees from having the same outcome. Be proactive. Be safe.